Hi everyone, it's Sandy and today I am filming my March wrap-up. So I'll be talking about all the books that I read in March. I ended up reading five books. I did end up DNFing one book, which I haven't done in a while. I will talk about that book later on in the video, but in terms of pages read, I read a total of 1,797 pages. But with that book that I DNFed, I read 160 pages of that. So in total, it is 1,957 pages. I had an average rating of four stars, which is pretty good. Two of the books that I read were physical books. Two of them were ebooks and one was an audiobook. So let's go ahead and jump into the wrap-up. The very first book that I started in March was one of my most anticipated releases for 2020 and that is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in a new Shadowhunter series called The Last Hours and it follows all of the children from the characters in The Infernal Devices. The story is set in 1903 and although there are so many characters in the story it does center around James and Lucy Herondale as well as Cordelia Carstairs who is the character on the cover of this lovely book. I do have a a full reading vlog dedicated to Chain of Gold. The first half is kind of spoiler free and then the second half does contain spoilers so I will leave that reading vlog down below if you're interested in hearing more of my spoilery filled thoughts. Honestly going into this book I thought that it was going to become like a new favorite of mine but unfortunately it didn't. I still really enjoyed it. I still really loved it but at the moment it's not my favorite Shadowhunter book. I don't even think I could pick a favorite Shadowhunter book but Clockwork Princess is definitely up there. I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars and the main reason for that is because I felt like it took a while for an actual plot to begin. Since this is the first book, the author does spend quite a lot of time introducing us to these characters, and I would say that's very character driven. And so if you're not already familiar with the Shadowhunter world and with these characters from all the different novellas that they show up in, I don't know if you could enjoy the story as much as a Shadowhunter fan would. But if you haven't read those novellas that are already out, you lose a lot of backstory to some of these characters, especially like Matthew Fairchild. There's a lot going on with his character. I don't remember the novella that focuses on Matthew Fairchild, but if you haven't read that novella, you might be wondering why is Matthew acting this way? Why is he constantly getting drunk? You just lose this insight to this character and I'm really glad that I've read all those novellas prior to reading this book. The characters are definitely my favorite part of the story. I love James and Lucy and Cordelia. I love the friendship between Lucy and Cordelia. Lucy and Cordelia aren't parabatized yet, but I love seeing how Lucy's like, yeah, Cordelia is my best friend. She's gonna be my parabatized and I love her and she's unafraid to show her love for her future parabatized. And obviously I love seeing characters from the Infernal Divine and I love seeing how the kids would talk about how they're witnessing their parents love for each other I think that's so sweet and it's so cute So overall I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars and I cannot wait to read the sequel The next book that I wanted to talk about is the book that I DNF'd and that is the seven and a half husbands The seven oh that's it. Nope <laughs> wrong book the Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. So I feel like the best way to describe what this book is about is just to read this little synopsis on the back. The story basically takes place in this giant mansion and Evelyn Hardcastle will be murdered at 11 p.m. There are eight days and eight witnesses for you to inhabit. We will only let you escape once you tell us the name of the killer. The narrator in the story is named Aiden Bishop and he is the character that we're following throughout the book and basically he would wake up in a body of a different guest every single day until he could figure out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle. So there are two main reasons why I chose to DNF this book and the first one is the rules surrounding Aiden waking up in a different body. Sometimes the rules were a little bit hard to follow and then it was revealed that there are actually different people doing the same thing that Aiden is doing and that just got really confusing because I'm like wait how exactly is this working? How I just don't understand. So basically Aiden wasn't the only one trying to figure figure out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle, there are actually other people doing this as well. So it was just really confusing how things were set up and with the whole technicality of everything. I was just really confused and I didn't like that. And then the second thing I didn't like about the story was the excessive fat shaming. I read up to page 160 and one of the characters that the narrator wakes up in is a fat man. The author would describe this character's movements and behaviors in a very terrible and awful way and I hated it. I hated reading about it. So I was just like, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna stop reading this book and I'm not gonna go back and pick it up again. So this is my first DNF of 2020. And it is a bummer because I've heard really great things about the mystery in here. I haven't spoiled myself on it yet, but I probably will do that just so I get some closure about how the story ended, but I have no interest in continuing the story myself and I rather spend my time reading something else that I would enjoy more. This month, I also realized that I read a wide variety of genres and I picked up a book this month from a genre that I usually don't gravitate towards. And that book is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is a very well-known historical 
historical fiction book and it's one that I've had on my TBR for a while and embarrassingly I've had this book checked out from the library for months. This book would constantly renew every three weeks so that I didn't actually have to go back to the library and recheck it out so that was kind of nice but yeah I've had this book checked out for at least a few months and I finally read it and I'm so glad that I did. So this story takes place in France and it takes place throughout World War II and it follows two sisters Vianne and Isabel. Due to the war Vianne's husband has to leave and eventually this German captain requisitions her home while she and her daughter are just trying to stay safe and stay alive. Isabel on the other hand is the younger sister and she ends up joining the resistance. Before going into my thoughts I do want to give some content warnings. Obviously the story is centered around World War II so war, death, violence, and sexual assault. This was a beautiful and heartbreaking story about two sisters and the things that they do in order to stay alive and to help others. I really love the story depicts the various roles of women during World War II and I loved seeing how empowering Vianne and Isabel were in different ways and yes I definitely did shed tears at the very end. I did give this book a 4 out of 5 stars because there were certain parts of the story where it felt slow and things just felt like they dragged but overall if you're looking for historical fiction and if you haven't read this one yet then I would definitely recommend it. I also know that they're making a movie for this and I'm really excited about that movie and I can't wait for it to come out and I believe the actresses that were casted were Dakota and Elle Fanning so that would be really interesting because they're sisters in real life but they haven't like acted together in any sort of project. I'm not really familiar with either of their works but I'm really looking forward to the movie. The third book that I finished in March is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. This is my first Riley Sager book. I have always wanted to pick up one of their books but I just haven't had the chance and then one day I was just scrolling through Libby and the book was available to check out so I immediately checked it out and I was in the mood for a thriller too so it was just the perfect timing. This story follows Jules who's offered a job as an apartment sitter in this very luxurious and high profile building. However there's a lot of rules that she has to abide by. One being that she has to always sleep in that apartment every single night and she can't have any guests. Once Jules is all settled and moved in she ends up connecting with another apartment sitter in the building whose name is Ingrid and both of them make plans to have lunch the very next day. However when the next day comes Ingrid does not show up and she is not responding to any of Jules texts or calls. So throughout the story Jules is trying to figure out what happened to Ingrid and she's also slowly learning more about the building's dark past. So I started this book like on a Saturday night and I finished it Sunday afternoon. Even though this book isn't super long I just flew through it. Prior to this book I don't even remember the last book that I read in under 24 hours. I just thought the story was super engaging and I love the way that it was formatted because it's kind of in a then versus now format. In the now timeline it was revealed that Jules was in a car accident and she's in the hospital so in the then chapters we're figuring out bits and pieces and leading up to why Jules is in the hospital in the first place. I really like the whole mysterious and eerie vibe of the apartment building that she was living in. Even though I did really enjoy the story I wasn't completely mind blown by the ending so I did take off a star from my rating of the book and I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. I felt like I've read something like that before and I can't remember what I'm remembering but it's not something that's like completely new or unique so that's why I took off a star rating but overall it was still a really enjoyable thriller. The fourth book that I finished in March is actually an audiobook and I also have not listened to an audiobook since like November. Since I started my current job I haven't really been listening to audiobooks anymore because I don't drive to my job. I take public transportation and that's when I get most of my physical reading done so I just have not listened to an audiobook in several months but I'm slowly trying to get back into that and Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert is the audiobook that I listened to in March. This is a YA contemporary and it follows our main character Suzette who returns home from boarding school and she has a stepbrother named Lyle who has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and one day Lionel confides in her that he is off his medication and Suzette kind of struggles what to do with this information. She obviously wants to support Lionel but she also wants the best for him but she does end up keeping his secret. As for content warning there is mention of abortion and teenage pregnancy as well as racism, homophobia, and discussions on suicidal thoughts. I really enjoyed the diversity of the story. The main character Suzette is black, Jewish, and bisexual. One of the love interests in the story is Emil and he's Korean and black and he also wears hearing aids. There are also other side characters in the story that are part of the LGBT plus community. Also fun fact the narrator of this audiobook is Alicia Wainwright who plays Maya in the Shadowhunters TV show and I thought she was a really great narrator. I really liked the mental illness representation in the story and the discussion that comes from going off medication without permission or consent from a doctor. I also really love the different types of relationships that we had in the story. So Lionel is Suzette's stepbrother and she also has a pretty close relationship with her stepdad and I really love seeing that. The main thing that I didn't really like about the story was the romance plot line. So Suzette has this crush on Emil. They're like childhood friends or something and one day at a party she meets Raffaella and she's instantly attracted to Raffaella and they end up 
up working together at a flower shop. So the romance in here is pretty complicated because not only is Suzette attracted to two different people, but one of the people that she is attracted to ends up dating her stepbrother, Lionel. So it's a pretty complicated romance situation. And I personally just didn't like how complicated it got with the fact that Suzette is attracted to Raffaella, but Raffaella begins dating her stepbrother. But at the same time, Suzette also has this thing going on with Emile. So the romance in the story is twice as complicated as to what I'm usually used to. So overall, I gave this book a four out of five stars. And the very last book that I read in March is The Final Girls by Riley Sager. So yes, I did read another Riley Sager book, and I believe this is the author's debut novel. The story follows Quincy, who is the sole survivor of a massacre that took place when she and a group of friends were on vacation at this cottage. Due to being the only survivor, she becomes known as a final girl, and she ends up connecting with this other final girl named Lisa, who was a sole survivor of a massacre that took place many years prior to what happened to Quincy. Ten years after Quincy survives, Lisa is found dead in a bathtub and it was ruled to be suicide. Then we have this character named Sam who is known as the second final girl and she shows up unannounced on Quincy's doorstep. So Quincy has repressed her memories of what happened to her during the night of her massacre but once we find out more details about what actually happened to Lisa she is forced to remember what really happened. So I will start off by saying that I didn't enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed Lock Every Door. I think Lock Every Door was a lot better. While this story had a very interesting premise I just felt like I never became invested in the story or the characters. It just felt very slow at times and so I felt like I didn't really care about the main character. I also didn't like that the story incorporated disassociative amnesia into it as a way to withhold information from the reader. It was just really frustrating because throughout the book we know that Quincy isn't telling us everything that truly happened that night and we get flashbacks to the night of the massacre so we're slowly trying to figure that out but it was just really frustrating not knowing the whole story. As a positive, one thing that I do have to say is that I definitely did not see the ending coming at all. Like the ending was a total shocker to me. I was definitely a little bit blown away by that ending because I never would have seen it coming in a million years and I was shook. So I ended up rating the story a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So those are all the books that I read in March. If you've read any of the books that I mentioned, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye!